is Channel 2 News at 11. Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with a story that's left many feeling angry and betrayed. Scores of parishioners in Westchester and Orange counties say their faith has been shaken, both by a priest accused of sexually molesting young boys and by church officials accused of covering for him. Tonight, one group of parishioners confronted the archdiocese, and Channel 2's Tony Guida is live in Croton Falls with details. Tony? Michelle, Father Edward Papala worked with the young people of St. Joseph's Parish here in Croton Falls from 1977 to 1981. And by all accounts tonight, he was very well liked by the children and by their parents. Now, one family has come forward to say that Father Papala sexually abused their son, adding to a litany of allegations against the priest. More than 100 parishioners turned out tonight for a meeting with a representative of the archdiocese to express their concerns. This is not a happy meeting. The pastor of St. Joseph's opened tonight's meeting with a prayer for a parish family that has been hurt, as he put it. Father James Borstelman also said, we share the pain of those in Goshen and Monroe, where other allegations of sexual abuse against Father Pipala have surfaced. Then the pastor prayed for divine help. Hopefully some of our young people and their families who have been hurt and violated will have the same opportunity to reclaim their lives. This meeting was then closed to cameras, and for the next 90 minutes, parishioners questioned a Monsignor from the New York Archdiocese closely. There was anger that, in the words of some, these allegations are just now surfacing, and disbelief that no one in authority knew. There was talk that Father Papala had apparently been receiving psychiatric help for depression, and concern that he shouldn't have been working with children at all. And there was defense of a man not yet even formally indicted on any charge. Afterwards, these comments. I just find it incredible that um, in all the years that Father Papalia was a priest, that it's only coming out now. And I do realize that children um, often don't talk about it, but we're dealing with an age where children are learning to come out with this. What's happened to presumed innocent until you're proven guilty? I just can't believe what's happened happened. But it does not mean that I think less of my faith. I will never give up my faith. Father or Monsignor O'Donnell of the Archdiocese declined our request to be interviewed, but he said tonight that he agrees the Archdiocese has a credibility problem. He agrees it seems incredible the Archdiocese didn't know more about Father Papala sooner, but he insists that even till tonight, the Archdiocese has received only two allegations of sexual abuse against the priest. Father Papala, who is 54, is said to be at a treatment facility in Maryland. A state police investigator leading the criminal investigation here has said if enough victims come forward, he's confident he can build a case against the priest and arrest him. Live from Croton Falls, New York, Tony Guida, back to the studio. Thank you, Tony. The issue of sex offenders and what happens to them after they've served their time presents a difficult dilemma. It pits the rights of the ex-convict against the rights of a community in fear. Channel 2's Lisa Rudolph joins us right now with a special report living with sex offenders. Lisa. Well, Ernie, once a convicted rapist or child molester gets out of prison, experts say chances are good he'll strike again. That's exactly what police say one offender did to a Brooklyn boy. We've disguised his identity to protect him. This boy, we'll call Johnny, is a tough street kid from Bushwick. But last year, when he was nine, he found out just how cruel the streets can be. He got it. I put it in the car. What were you doing? Were you yelling? Were you scared? I was scared. He was just a stone's throw from the local police precinct when a stranger forever changed his life. The man was a child molester. He drove Johnny to an industrial area of Massapequa, Queens, and sodomized him at knife point. He was trying to treat me. He had a wrench bag. I creeped him. I checked. He took out the knife and he said, don't move. And then what did he do? He then he took his brother's butt behind my back. Did he hurt you? Yeah. Johnny's mother. And the man, when he finished with him, um, they dropped us behind the church over there, um, some bridges. Mm -hmm. And he came here and uh, ran and uh, screaming and crying. <laughs> What's more horrendous about this story is the man now about to go on trial for sodomizing Johnny, Jose Velez, has a long history. He was arrested in 85 for uh, 
molesting a child, and, and he was convicted in 86 for molesting a child. Another child? Another child, yes. Then just months out of prison, on parole. He molested five children, five boys. Velez at first refused therapy, but was later given mandatory counseling in prison and then on parole. As it turns out, it was during that same time he allegedly molested the five young boys. We uh, arrest the fellows and they go through the legal system, yes. But you can't keep them locked up? Can't keep them locked up forever, no. What do you hope happens to him? Die. Well, he just said something. The prison for life. Or his soul burning in hell. No one may leave the courtroom. Perhaps no other criminal inflames public passions like a sex offender. An estimated 40% of rapists and child molesters will offend again when they get out of prison, one of the highest recidivism rates of any crime. Cities across the country are struggling to figure out what to do with them. A Houston rapist asked to be castrated. In Washington State... Mr. Dodd, is there anything you wish to say? The notorious child molester and murderer Wesley Allen Dodd was executed. And recently in Wyckoff, New Jersey, public outcry over rapist Donald Chapman's release from prison led to 24-hour police surveillance. He's now in a Trenton psychiatric facility, but could be out later this month. State Assemblyman Patrick Roma is trying to change the law to keep sexual predators off the street. The people of the state of New Jersey are fed up, and they really feel that something has to be done. Under the controversial proposal, sex offenders who've already paid their debt to society, completed their sentence, but are still considered dangerous, would be sent to a mental institution indefinitely, possibly for life, not for any crimes they've already done, but for what they might do in the future. Similar measures have been adopted by other states, always with the same heated debate. Is it protecting society or destroying the Constitution? When we talk in terms of rights, yes, there is a balancing. But in the last analysis, if we must err, it must be on the side of society to be protected. Ed Martone of the American Civil Liberties Union says the proposed law goes too far. There's a, a better way to prevent crime, and that's lock everybody up. Um, but that's not the kind of society we want to live in. We have to enforce such a free country right now in jail. This time, if Jose Velez is convicted of molesting Johnny and four other boys, he faces up to 25 years behind bars. With parole, he could be out in eight. That's what frightens Johnny and his family. You said you cried every night? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked to him, we cried in the bed. I had to take him to the psychiatrist because he said things. Uh, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to look for that man when I be big. Yeah. And I'm going to destroy him. Mm -hmm. Do you think the justice system made a mistake? Yeah, they make a mistake because it's not only one, it's a lot of kids. Those are little angels. Why did this man do that to them? So far, New Jersey is the only state in our area to have a sexual predator law pending. It hasn't passed yet. Now, tomorrow, we will visit a state with one of the toughest laws in the country for sex offenders. You'll meet a twice-convicted child molester and see what happened to him when he got out and found his neighbors ready and waiting. Ernie Michelle. Thank you, Lisa. In other news tonight, a new state report paints a picture of chaos and horror at a major New York City-run hospital. The State Health Department report criticizes North Central Bronx Hospital for botched operations and poor patient care. In one extreme case, a patient reportedly died because there was a 15-minute delay inserting a breathing tube. City officials say they're working to improve the hospital's record. Hospital officials say they're suffering under the same limitations as other public hospitals, less funding and greater needs. A breaking story right now from war-torn Bosnia. The so-called Serb Assembly has just rejected a UN-brokered peace plan. The parliament met for most of the day to consider the plan before voting a short time ago. Earlier today, Serbian forces defiantly pounded Sarajevo with artillery fire. In Washington, President Clinton continued to try and win Allied support for military strikes against the Serbs if they rejected the peace plan, which they have just done. A high school tragedy coming up next. Students who cut out of school end up in a deadly accident. Plus, what happened when a visitor jumped into the lion's den at the Bronx Zoo? And also, tennis star Monica Seles talks for the first time about being attacked by a crazed fan. Later on, Frank Field on whether we'll have any more rain.
Well, we expect to have some beautiful weather coming this weekend once we get through the fog and the showers tonight. I'll have details when I join you. Channel 2 News, sponsored by your Tri-State BMW dealers. Can you handle this? Try me. In a car and driver competition of these world-class cars, the overall winner was the BMW 740i. I can handle that. They judged us on top speed. Beautiful machine. Braking. My kind of car. Acceleration. And on luxury, comfort, and our favorite, handling. I can handle that. And of course, it was number one in the fun to drive category. Boy, I could really handle that. You can handle it at your Tri-State BMW dealer. What's new with mobile? Let's take a look. Introducing new Mobile Super Plus Detergent Gasoline. It still cleans fuel injectors and intake valves. Now it helps keep the very heart of your engine cleaner. Down here, the cylinders and pistons. So come down to the Big Red O and drive your engine clean with new Mobile Super Plus, the detergent gasoline. I'm Jim McCann of 800 Flowers, and our guest today is a mother, mm -hmm. a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. Oh, that's me. <laughs> what would be the best gift for Mother's Day? A red convertible. You got one back there somewhere? No, but hmm? what about the world's best mom well, bouquet? Well, it's not a car, but I love it anyway. You know you look sweet. One world's best mom bouquet, guaranteed and delivered by Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> The King of England is coming to America. His name is Lennox Lewis, and he's the heavyweight champion. Riddick Bowe met the King and was quickly dispatched. Razor Ruddick's departure was equally abrupt. On May 8th, the King will grant an audience to Tony Tucker, the number one contender. Tucker has little respect for royalty. God may save the Queen, but nobody's gonna save Lennox Lewis. Lewis versus Tucker, heavyweight championship. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view and at select closed circuit locations. Kung Fu's David Carradine presents the tragic legend of Bruce and Brandon Lee, The Curse of the Dragon, a hard copy exclusive. Tomorrow at 7. Some troubling questions are being asked tonight following a deadly crash involving Westchester County High School students. Two students were killed, four others seriously injured during a springtime joyride yesterday. Channel 2's Pat Battle joining us live right now from Portchester with details on that. Pat? Well, Ernie, students from Port Chester High School and other members of this community have been keeping a vigil at a memorial site set up here at the accident scene. The police investigation into the cause continues, but people who live on this street and witnesses to the accident say speed undoubtedly played a role in it. They say Olivia Street here is a virtual drag strip. And while students here mourn their dead classmates and pray for the wounded, many of them are also rallying around the young driver. And just as we soak and we mourn and, and, and we feel very upset, um, he and his family do share the same amount of pain, and in some cases they may share even more pain. Is that going to help you get through this, Anthony, the support of your friends? Yes. Surrounded by his peers tonight, 16-year-old Anthony Caruzzi would say nothing about the accident yesterday afternoon that claimed the lives of two of his classmates. Anthony was driving this 1989 Hyundai up the steep winding curve of Olivia Street when he lost control, hit the curb, and slammed into this telephone pole. As I was tripping over here, and I looked up, and I, I see the car near. I heard the bang. He bounced off that pole about seven feet. It was about seven feet to hit that pole on a fly. And all I remember is seeing it in the air and the body's part fall flying out. Killed in the accident were 17-year-olds Michael Thomas and Angela Secca, both members of the Port Chester High School sophomore class. This is Michael's best friend. He, like, everybody liked him. He, I, he didn't deserve to die. He was one of those kids that, you know, everybody liked him. He, he, didn't, he never did anything wrong. Two other students, Rondell Oliver and Erica Mansfield, were critically injured in the accident. Police have listed Anthony Caruzzi as an unlicensed driver, but he and his parents tonight insisted that he does have a valid driver's license issued just two weeks ago. Still, some students gathered at a memorial tonight to their friends placed at the scene of the accident say they've seen Caruzzi driving. Like, he, he would definitely be speeding, and you even see the crossing guard saying, well, telling him slow down, but he would, he would, he was always showing up. Yeah, he like, like, right up on the curb and try to make the car go on two wheels sometimes. 
Now, Anthony Caruzzi has not been charged in connection with this accident. In a related story, earlier tonight, a large group of students marched on the home of school superintendent Anthony Napoli. They say they're upset by the way he's handling this whole affair. They don't believe he's addressing it really at all, and they just wanted him to know that the students, black, white, Hispanic, all of them, are united behind their fellow classmates. I'm Pat Battle live in Port Chester. Let's go back to you in the studio. Thank you, Pat. A mentally handicapped man is recovering tonight after an experience that horrified visitors at the Bronx Zoo. Officials say the man climbed a fence and got into the lion's exhibit where he played with two lions. Eventually, the animals began pawing him, but officials say luckily he only received minor scratches. Witnesses say the man was in the lion's den for about 20 minutes until zookeepers rescued him. Tennis star Monica Seles is vowing tonight to return to the game that she loves. Now, last Friday, you'll recall, a deranged spectator stabbed Celis in the back during a tennis match in Germany. Today, the world's top-ranked woman player spoke publicly about the attack, which left an inch-long wound in her back. I just leaned forward, kind of, just to put the towel here and concentrate. And all I just felt was like, woo, something in my back. And I automatically went forward, because I know something, something went in. I thought, I don't know how big it was or... Um, you know, and then I just saw blood coming out. Police say Celis' attacker claimed to be a Steffi Graf fan who couldn't stand seeing Celis ranked number one. Celis is now undergoing physical therapy in Vail, Colorado, and could be sidelined for several months. Coming up next, the latest on Cardinal O'Connor following surgery and the tornado that touched down tonight in Oklahoma. We'll have details. Later on, will a movie about a big switch in the White House leave you laughing? Dennis Reviews, Dave, coming up. The day flies by with a bigger, brighter choice of music. Light FM, turn it on. Now and forever, you are a part of Yesterday's favorites and today's newest arrivals. A bigger, brighter choice of music. Light FM, turn it on. Eight engine patents, nine chassis patents. Four drivetrain patents. Now you can enjoy the benefits of over 80 internationally patented ideas in the Mitsubishi Diamante ES for just $1,000 down and as little as $299 a month. Never has the cost of progress been so easy to live with. Enjoy sophisticated technology. Lisa Diamante at your Tri-State Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Dear folks, having a great time. People have been so nice to us. We keep buying guidebooks. There's so much to see in Israel. We may never get home at this rate. Love to all, Herb and Judy. Channel 2 Weather Report, sponsored by Cotton Incorporated. With steadfast air, the people cry, bring future to new world. Time echoes by, the touch, the feel, the fabric of our lives. The touch, the feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. John Cardinal O'Connor is resting comfortably tonight after undergoing an operation that is all too common in older men. Channel 2's Dr. Peter Salgo is live now outside St. Vincent's Hospital where the Cardinal is recovering from prostate surgery. Peter? Michelle, things seem to have gone very well today. In fact, the operation took less than an hour, we were told. Within hours after that, the Cardinal was already answering correspondence. In short, he was behaving like the typical patient who's had his prostate problem corrected. He will do uh, very well. Uh, uh, there are very few complications to a procedure like this, and uh, he's doing remarkably well now. And so the 73-year-old prelate suffered with and was treated for one of the most common problems afflicting older American men, enlargement of the prostate gland. Essentially every male will have benign enlargement of the prostate, 50% by age 55. However, only one out of five will need any medical intervention. 
We're not talking about cancer here, but about benign enlargement of the gland that surrounds the outlet of the bladder. As the prostate enlarges, the outlet becomes compressed. This can cause irritation in the bladder and frequent urination, or can prevent normal urination altogether. The risk, of course, is damaging the bladder or damaging the kidneys, developing bladder stones, uh, or infection. The operation, called a transurethral prostatectomy, or TERP for short, simply slices away part of the enlarged gland from inside the bladder outlet and reopens the channel. After a TERP at the current time, people use in the hospital two or three days. And you can rest assured that while he's in the hospital, the cardinal is going to be treated well. It's a great thing when you wear a collar and a, and a ring and a red hat. Well, the cardinal expects to be up and around very quickly, and in fact, the secretary said today that he plans to be conducting mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral as soon as this coming Sunday. All in all, not bad. Reporting live from St. Vincent's Hospital here in Manhattan, I'm Dr. Okay. Peter Salgo. Michelle, Ernie? All right, not bad at all. Okay. Thank you, Peter. All right, on to the weather now in Frankfield, who's in for Stormfield. And you're going to begin tonight with uh, pictures of the tornado in Oklahoma. Oh, they had some violent weather in the southwest uh, in Oklahoma. We'll take a look at some pretty big-sized tornadoes. Fortunately, the storms that you see here uh, were over farmland. So there were just a few buildings uh, damaged, and some of them were quite violent. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the pictures of hailstones that came out of those tornadoes were literally, uh, well, you might always call them grapefruit size, but here we got tiny little drops of drizzle that affected us this morning along with fog. Note that the humidity is way up there at 100%, so more fog, dense fog, will develop overnight, particularly from the city to the east. In addition, you see the lines of showers and even a few scattered thunderstorms, those the yellow and orange spots, developing and heading through, so we're in for some more showers overnight. However, once the low-pressure system you see there moves off to the northeast, much drier air comes sweeping in tomorrow afternoon. Westerly winds, much drier air, and that means quite a change and a great weekend coming our way. So for tonight, dense fog warning from the city out to the east. That fog will persist through the morning hours with just a couple of lingering showers during the morning. And then after that, clouds will begin to break. By afternoon, you'll see sunshine. And that sunshine will continue to stay with us right through the next couple of days and if you like the last couple of weekends, that glorious weather, you have another one in store for you this weekend. Temperatures on Saturday in the 70s on Sunday, well up in the 70s, along with lots of sunshine. No complaints great about stuff. the weekend. It'll be great for my first Mother's Day, right? Oh, how oh, nice. I'm, I'm so day. excited. Still ahead, Kevin Klein stars as the president in a comedy called Dave. Dennis will have his review. And later on, the Nets take on the Cavs in playoff action tonight. Steve Levy will have the highlights. Delta gives you more flights from over here to over there. Only Delta flies you non-stop to more cities from over here to over there. In fact, only Delta flies you non-stop to more cities in Europe than all these airlines combined. Delta, we love to fly and it shows the world over. dividends are the hallmark of a blue chip investment and a 1993 Cadillac is a blue chip. It comes with Cadillac owner privileges, continuing dividends like trip interruption protection, even free roadside service if you're locked out or out of gas. Now drive a 93 Cadillac DeVille for only $4.49 a month on a 24-month lease. See your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. And enjoy the dividends. Dreyfus knows opportunities have to be chosen carefully. Which is why the Dreyfus Growth and Income Fund is so appealing. Since it began over 15 months ago, the fund is up over 26% and has now attracted over 40,000 smart investors. For more information and a free prospectus, call 1-800-DREYFUS. Dreyfus Growth and Income Fund. Survival of the smartest. Paula, 
I've got something to ask you. When you develop your film at CVS, you'll get either a free second set of jumbo prints or a free roll of film. Greg, I don't know what to say. See, you'll take the film. I'll take the film. CVS. When we develop our film at CVS, mm -hmm. should we take the free second set of jumbo prints or the free roll of film? Double prints. No, take the film. <laughs> they aren't coming on the honeymoon, are they? Oh, ha. CVS. All right, imagine a guy who looks so much like the President of the United States. Even his wife is fooled. Can you imagine? Well, that is the premise of the new movie, Dave, starring Kevin Klein. Ladies and gentlemen, the President... No, Dennis Cunningham <laughs> is here right now. Imagine that. Um, imagine that. Yeah, Kevin Klein is, I think, well, we all think, one of the movie's very best comic actors. Trouble is, we seldom see him be that. True, now, in his Oscar-winning role in A Fish Called Wanda, you saw him at his 100% comedy best. And now with the new movie called Dave, you also see him in the same best comic mode, but not for all that long, and there's the rub. Dave, while not actually a bad movie, just stops being a comedy, or actually much of anything, turning into yet another one of those movies that seem written and directed by a committee after extensive market research. Of course, Kevin Klein is not the real president. He's okay. Dave Kovic, an ordinary guy who Congrats. looks exactly like the real one, currently very ill and hidden away. And so Dave plays the president and is soon far more popular than the real one. And for a while, the movie has much fun with the presidency, senators, commentators, pundits, politics, the public, the first lady, Sigourney Weaver, and the wicked chief of staff, Frank Langella. That's for a while. But after about 40 or so minutes, the movie goes into a steep decline, becoming sloppy, mushy, teary, timid, simple-minded, and but a shadow of its former self. Don't put on this man of the people routine and then do something like this. I don't understand. You know very well that was not a works building you vetoed. That would have given those children homes. When I think of that spectacle you put on with the little boy and the magic trick. Wait a minute, what's wrong with the magic trick? Some magic. You made their funding disappear. Now, I don't have any explanation for that awful music, but the awful scene is a little bit too typical of the movie called Dave. Aside from Kevin Klein's pretty much wasted performance and Sigourney Weaver's and Frank Langella's, there's also a wasted performance by Charles Grodin. Uh, the movie written by Gary Ross, directed by Ivan Reitman, with, of course, that aforementioned committee and that market research. The movie's uh, final number five, not bad, means it's okay, it's just that I want more for you. You understand? I want more. Sort of like a... For you. Yeah. Like a one-term movie, is yeah. that what you're saying here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay, anyway. Dennis, thanks. Coming up next year, the Nets host Cleveland in a playoff showdown. And the Yankees try to burst into first place. Steve Levy has sports next. Weight Watchers free trial offer. Brand new